This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and M Now Biscuits. Partnership focused on financial literacy made. Local level government elections to proceed as planned. And workshop on One Health commence today. A very good evening. This is National MTV News. I'm Natasha Ovoy. Thank you for joining us. The 2024 local level government elections are to proceed as planned. This was confirmed by the Electoral Commissioner, Simon Sinai, in a statement this afternoon. The Electoral Commissioner, Simon Sinai, has met with the Interdepartment Election Committee and have agreed to have the local level government election to go as scheduled in September. Mr. Sinai said the committee has agreed to look for balance of the funding required to conduct the election and the Electoral Commission will stick to the election timetable. He said the Finance Department has released a total of 52 million kina from the 160.9 million kina that was approved to run the LLG elections. He is now appealing to the stakeholders such as the provincial administrators to work with their respective provincial election advisory committees. He said for the pending vacant seats, the committee take note of that and said they will now need funding to conduct the elections as early as next year. The open seats that are due for by-elections include Paila Pogera in Anga province, they open in Western Highlands province, and Aitapelumi in the West Sipik province. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. The Center for Excellence in Financial Inclusion and the Small and Medium Enterprises Corporation has signed a memorandum of understanding to help SME owners know how to look after their hard-earned money. The event was officiated by the Managing Director for Small and Medium Enterprises Corporation, Petrus Ralda and the Executive Director for Center of Excellency in Financial Inclusion, Salia Ronan Singe, together with their support staffs. The main purpose of the MOU was to include financial literacy in the small business trainings that SME Corporation carries out in the country. Both these organizations have similar goals. We are looking for the prosperous future for the country and also to have a better standard of living for everybody. We can influence policy in this country. You know, as, as two, two national entities, this particular partnership will definitely drive policy influence where we can definitely change, change the mindset of... Mr. Ranan Singh said small and medium enterprises and Center for Excellence for Financial Inclusion have the same goal. He further elaborated on the work SEFI is doing. We are, SEFI is now working with the Department of Education to introduce financial literacy to the school curriculum also, where we strongly feel that if we change the mindset of the younger generation, our future is going to be very different. So we, are, we, are, we, we will introduce financial education from grade 1 up to grade 12, and also, when, when you leave the college, you will be competent enough to manage your money. And also, you will know all the investment opportunities that you have. The managing director for SNEC, Petrus Ralda, said SME cuts through all sectors of the government. Thus, such partnership is important. So focused on this whole thing. The uh, vertical and horizontal alignment is not there right from the national level to the sub-national levels and the districts, world level. Uh, there's no alignment, and in the process, we waste a lot of limited resources. But the important thing is that the sector or the SME sector, all focus is on the people, and the, we have to work together. We, all government sectors have to come together and work together, and that's the testament of this agreement. He said after doing an evaluation in his organization for the past two years, 
they have found out that there is need for collaboration in order to progress in terms of small and medium enterprises in the country. The event concluded with the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between the two parties. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. The Executive Managing Director for the Center of Excellence in Financial Inclusion, Salia Ranangsing, revealed that they are working with the Department of Education to make financial literacy a subject to be taken by students from grades 1 to 12. We are, CEFI is now working with the Department of Education to introduce financial literacy to the school curriculum also where we strongly feel that if we change the mindset of the younger generation, our future is going to be very different. So we, are, we, are, we, we will introduce financial education from grade one up to grade 12. And also, when, when you leave the college, you will be competent enough to manage your money. And also, you will know all the investment opportunities that you have. The Yanguru Sausia district in Isipik province today signed a memorandum of agreement with the Women's Microbank Limited or Mama Bank to set up a district credit guarantee scheme. This is to assist village-based micro, small and medium enterprises to take loans from the bank. Yanguru Sausia MP Richard Maru said the scheme is especially for women in villages. Under the MOA we are going to sign today, people can borrow for businesses, school fees, build their homes, and other reasons that the bank feels is, is justified. The only qualification to get a loan is basically if you save first. If you don't save, you don't meet the requirement. In normal banks, they ask you, what, what properties do you have to mortgage? They ask you for security. In this case, your saving is your security. If you put 500 kina, the district will put 500 kina to secure your loan under the 500,000 kina we are giving. So if you don't pay the loan, the bank will take your 500 kina in your savings and the district's 500 kina in our security deposit to repay the loan. In that way, the bank is not at risk at all. Emphasizing that this comes in the effort to develop the district to be an economic powerhouse in the country, Mr. Maru assured the bank that the district hopes to see major changes by October this year, enabling a positive environment for banking services, in addition to the support by the district. Present for the signing was the CEO for Mama Bank, who highlighted the bank's progress in the district. So with this, I will urge all the... Uh, you know, people of Yangur Sausia, that we have already opened more than 1,200 uh, account and almost like uh, 200,000 savings been mobilized. And that's where I think actually it will be a good start uh, for, for the people of Yangur Sausia uh, to start with uh, the people who are eligible Furthermore, the CEO for Yanguru Sausia District, Jeffrey Lenny, gave this update. In the district, we have uh, set up a space. We have given a space for the Mama Bank. They have est established themselves. Uh, we have already purchased a vehicle, a, a open bank, worth of 200000 a brand-new Land Cruiser open bank utility. Uh, <clears throat> your Mama Bank has carried out a, a financial literacy training uh, some three weeks ago, uh, about two or three hundred participants, especially uh, women, they have graduated with a certificate. So in the district, we are really pleased. And this uh, signing of MO is very significant for the people of Yangu Sausia. Mr. Maru noted that the official opening of the Women's Microbank Office in Yanguru will take place in the next two weeks upon the Prime Minister's visit to the district. Women's Microbank, rebranded as Mama Bank, now strives to present its clients with efficient banking systems. This was expressed by CEO for Mama Bank today. 
including the Yanguru South Sea District as the second district in East Sipik province to sign with the bank. The Mama Bank now notes having partnership with about 13 DDAs in PNG. CEO Das noted that most of the bank provided mainly financial services to most of the districts. There are a couple of uh, districts, they came on board, but uh, after that there is a silo, like, you know, not able to go to the next step. But there are a f good number that they have progressed forward. They started uh, bringing the financial services, like giving the fees and then transportation and all these things. And at the same time, they are also coming up with the financial literacy services that giving them before giving out loans, giving them the financial literacy and business development training, making them understand and then from there we are going for the loan. Stressing that the bank believes in establishing financial literacy before financial servicing, the CEO noted that Yanguru South Sea is the first district granted the credit guarantee scheme. That the idea of credit scheme comes with the access to financial services first, which we did six months back. And that's where we are trying to reach out to the people, not only Angry South Asia, but whole country, how we can bring the innovative solution to giving the financial inclusion services at their nearest doorstep so that they should not come all the way to the you know, main center to do banking. And that's where Mama Bank is thriving to get into the agent banking and then mobile banking, all, all those things, and you will see one by one is coming up. Malinta Yopolo, National MTV News. The Waigani Committal Court dismissed the criminal charge of causing disaffection against Sergeant Tinol Pakiapon this morning. The ruling was that the committal court lacked jurisdiction over the case. The court determined that the allegations did not meet the criteria of Section 136, Subsection 1A or Section 20, Subsection 1AW of the Police Act 1998. Tinol's lawyer Felix Kua argued that Section 136 is intended for cases involving destabilizing conduct within the police force, which was not evident in Pakepon's case. Pakepon had acted within his duty by applying for a warrant for Police Commissioner David Manning based on a lawful complaint. Well, the ruling is, uh, <coughs> is a situation that uh, the section that uh, the police did uh, used to charge my client, you know, it's not a proper charge. It's not a proper position uh, to charge him. Uh, there is no uh, absence causing disaffection as charged uh, on the defendant and the section that uh, they involve. And that section alone has to be uh, uh, connected to the other subsections of going down. Kua said the committal court lacks the power to determine the matter, hence dismissing it. And by law, the initial court has ruled that uh, the district court has raised the issue of jurisdiction, which is correct. The committal court does not have, uh, well, the district court does not have uh, jurisdiction to determine this case, as per the ruling of uh, the initial court. Uh, the same situation with uh, the case of uh, Alan Kopi against uh, Gerbaki. It's a, seri a very same uh, and similar situation. And that's the reason why the judge, uh, I mean, the magistrate dismissed the, the charge. It does not have jurisdiction to determine the charge. The court agreed, stating that Pakepon's actions did not constitute a criminal or disciplinary offense under the Police Act. Consequently, the case was dismissed and Pakepon's bail was refunded. The decision was based on the case law Baki v. Kopi. The case will go for National Court review tomorrow. James Gukan, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. Port Mosby has seen a decline in street vending starting yesterday. The NCD police visited the street markets and sellers along the traffic lights and main roads.
The operation started yesterday and continued today. The street vending has seen a stop at the main places like the Waigani traffic light and the market along the Waigani office. This newsroom went around the city and realized that there are a few who are still selling, but the majority did follow the instruction from the police to stop. The Metropolitan Superintendent for National Capital District, Silva Sica, said the purpose of the operation is to reduce the number of petty crimes and clean up the city. The opportunities to criminals, uh, they take, uh, you know, under, under these uh, activities, disguise of these activities, um, they are prone to commit uh, crimes in the city. So that is why, um, as much as also would like to clean up the city as well, and make sure to bring back our, our you know, safety and confidence back to our citizens and also our investors in the city. James Guken, National MTV News. Maprik has returned to normalcy following recent disturbances and subsequent arrests. East Epic Provincial Police Commander Christopher Tamari confirmed that investigations are ongoing to determine the cause of the unrest. Due to facility upgrades at Boram Correctional Service, over 60 detainees out of 165 that were charged and detained for causing riots and disturbances at Maprik have been transferred to Wewek police cells from Maprik. The remaining detainees were moved from Maprik to Wewek today. Maprik District Administrator Raymond Bakawi reported that the district has resumed regular business activities and is preparing for Prime Minister James Marape's visit next Thursday. In related news, Tamari announced that the ringleader of the recent massacre in Angoram district of East Sipi province has voluntarily surrendered with the assistance of local residents. Tamari commended the assistance of local residents towards police in maintaining law and order in the community. James Guken, National MTV News. Through the national government's tax credit scheme, Octedi Mining Limited has awarded a road construction contract worth 36.1 million kina from Atemkit to Kavarabib in North Fly District, Western Province. The 28.7 kilometer road will serve as a critical link for the two villages of Atemkit and Kavarabib whose people include the principal landowners of the Octedi mine operation. Currently, the villages of Atemkit and Kavorabib are only accessible by helicopter. OTML Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer Kadi Ilimbit said people of these villages are principal landowners, just like the people of Finalbin and Bultem. He said, unfortunately, it took Octedi and the government too long to recognize them through such infrastructure projects. Fly Engineering and Asset Management Limited, a local company, has been awarded the project, which is expected to be completed within 30 months. Present for the occasion were North Fly MP James Donald and Western Provincial Member Taboy Awiyoto. The newly constructed Samsam Bridge in the Mumeng district of Bulolo in Morambe province was officially opened by provincial member Luta Wenge. The people of Samsam in the Mumeng LLG of Bulolo district will now have proper access over the Bulolo River, connecting them to the main Wau Bulolo Highway. Since the 1970s, the people have been using a wire footbridge to travel as the only means of access across the river. The construction of the bridge began in 2023 last year, funded by the Morobe Provincial Government and built by B&F Construction Limited. Morobe Governor Honorable Luther Wenge officially declared the bridge open for use with the ribbon cutting ceremony. <laughs> Thank you. Quite long. 
Member for Bulolo, Honorable Sam Basil Jr., and member for Middle Fly, Maso Hewabi, were also present during the opening ceremony. The construction of the 54-meter bridge cost a total of 7.5 million kina and can carry up to 40 tons in weight. With the local population of over 2,000 people, the people of Samsam celebrated with various displays of traditional dances to mark the significance of the day. Jessica Nui, National MTV News, Lay. The Department of Works and Highways will now have a new secretary. The National Executive Council has appointed Gibson Holimba as the acting secretary for the department. Mr. David Were has denied the media on the appointment of his successor. He said he is still the secretary for Works and Highways as he has two more years to be completed. However, in an article, Minister for Works and Highways, Solon Mirism, has confirmed the revoking of Mr. Were and appointed Gibson Olemba as the acting secretary. The National Executive Council has appointed Mr. Olemba as the acting secretary for the Department of Works and Highways. The appointment was made on the 7th of August. Mr. Olemba, who has been working with the Department of Works and Highways for more than 10 years and is an engineer by profession. He was the Deputy Secretary who was in charge of network planning, design and standards prior to his appointment by the NEC. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. A workshop was held on the preparation of PNG's first Biennial Transparency Report and the improvement of the greenhouse gas inventory. In the three-day workshop, discussions were on the importance of agriculture as the important source of emission for PNG. Some of their findings were data collection on emissions from agriculture, such as livestock, soil management, and rice cultivation that allows PNG to assess their impact on global warming. The workshop was funded by the European Union, funded under Forestry Climate Change Biodiversity Program for PNG. The acting general manager for MRV and National Communications, William Lacain, said the Beniel Transparency Report Workshop is a crucial step towards enhancing the national climate reporting capabilities. The vulnerability needs assessment helps establish an understanding of the extent to which the changing climate will affect various sectors. He said the workshop was not only to facilitate the accurate collection of data, but also to strengthen the commitment to the Paris Agreement. PNG is ranked as the 10th most vulnerable country to the risk of climate change. Climate change is expected to exacerbate existing risk factors, raising significant challenges for PNG's development with expected impacts on various sectors. The vulnerability needs assessment helps to establish an understanding of the extent to which the changing climate will affect various sectors. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. And now we take a look at the Nesfan market report. The Kina closed lower at 0 0.2577 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0 0.2502 US dollars, 0 0.3770 Australian dollars, 0 0.2212 Euro, and 36.48 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee closed higher, cocoa closed lower, copra closed higher, palm oil closed lower, Crude oil is trading lower and copper closed unchanged. On the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading higher and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us.
You're watching National MTV News. A One Health Action Plan will be developed and applied in Papua New Guinea through the Food and Agriculture Organization's One Health Assessment Tool. The officer of the Asia and Pacific Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, Dr. Scott Newman, revealed this today at the second One Health Assessment Workshop in Port Moresby. The first workshop conducted was aimed at identifying aspects of One Health that can be applied in the country through discussions with different government sectors. Transitioning from that workshop, we want to share with them in this workshop the results of the work that they did. But actually, what we want to do is take those results and now talk about gaps that still exist in country and then talk about how we can work on solutions and identify those solutions and come up with a One Health action plan that can be applied and delivered here in PNG. Papua New Guinea is the first country in the Pacific region to carry out the One Health assessment. We've had this tool available to all the other countries in the region and yet PNG stepped up in their work planning and, and you know this is really wonderful. Um, USAID has been generous and provided global health security funding to support the country and to support FAO Deliver. And Dr. Newman said the respective government sectors involved in One Health lacks coordination mechanism. There's not yet in place um, a very strong solid coordination mechanism that enables and facilitates the collaboration between the health, the animal health, um, the environment, and, and these sectors. And really, for One Health to be delivered properly, we know that there needs to be a coordination mechanism. In the One Health concept recognizes that human life is connected to the health of animals and the environment, therefore requires corporations by different government sectors involved in the One Health assessment. Malinda Yopolo, National MTV News. Grade 12 certificates will now be a compulsory certificate for the government to identify youths for second chance education and job opportunities. The Prime Minister said for youths to access education and job opportunities provided by the government, they must complete grade 12. Grade 12 certificate will be the compulsory certificate for us to know who you are, for you to uh, go and open bank account for SME assistance, for you to ensure that you are going to Australia to work in the market that is opening for Papuans to work in Australia and elsewhere. So Grade 12 certificate will be important certificate, will give a transition period, possibly up to 2020, 2030, etc. So every child and youth amongst us matriculates to Grade 12. The government is also working with developing partners to create space in the tertiary institutions. We want to create 30,000 new spaces at the very earliest. And so this is a work in progress. I want to indicate that ADB has shown great interest in expanding in the technical vocational school sector. Meanwhile, the government is looking at building the police force to 10,000 men force. I want to indicate here through this press that all policemen recruited through the new training will sign allegiance of both to state and for the first five years, no beer, no boy, no smoke. Uh, employment space is few. And as employer, we will be very strict on these conditions. Malinda Yopolo, National MTV News. More than 265,000 kina was presented to the Medeng students at the University of Papua New Guinea by the Medeng Provincial Government yesterday at the school campus. The scholarship program called the Sir Peter Butter Tertiary Education Scholarship was introduced last year when Governor for Medeng, Ramsey Pariwa, took the office. The program was basically to support all Medeng tertiary students in the country. The scholarship includes both the indigenous and residents from Medeng province. Mr. Pariwa said he was there to show the importance of the scholarship program. The reason why I'm here, my pers personal presence here, is to show the seriousness that the Medeng Provincial Government is taking to support the students of Medeng. My commitment 
and the seriousness that we are taking. He explained on why he came up with the program. We've also seen New Island students being supported by New Island Provincial Government. So we meeting students were wondering, when will Medellin Provincial Government step up to shoulder and share the burden that our parents are facing and we ourselves are facing? When will the Medellin Provincial Government step up and show to Morobe, Enga, and New Ireland that we can do it? If they can do it, we can do it. But, you know, we just look down on ourselves and just hope that one day Medellin Provincial Government will step up. So I was inspired by how those provinces were supporting their students. This sort of intervention by the provincial government is needed. This sort of program or initiative must be done in Medellin. The patron for Medellin Students Association, Kurere Matanzana, said he did not have the opportunity when he was a student back then. It, my era weren't fortunate to have that kind of support, but you are privileged. It is a privilege, not a right. So it's an investment from our government uh, to you. Uh, please embrace it and make the most of it. He thanked Governor Pariwa for the initiative to support the students. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. The U.S. Ambassador to Papua New Guinea, Her Excellency Anne Marie, made a historic visit to Enga Province, where she officially closed the 30th Enga Cultural Show following a brief visit to the Mulitaka landslide area and the innovative University of Enga. The U.S. Ambassador to Papua New Guinea, Her Excellency Anne Mary, arrived at Wapenamanda Airport in Enga Province to officially close the 30th Enga Cultural Show. The Enga Provincial Administrator Sandy Saka said, It is truly really positive to see the U.S. Ambassador visit our province and show genuine concern for the prosperity of Enga people. According to the Disaster Committee, following a visit to the Mulitaka landslide area, where she witnessed the devastation caused by the recent natural disaster. The U.S. Ambassador took short time to engage with the locals and addressed that the U.S. aid will still continue until they resettled. Meanwhile, after her visit from Innovative University of Enga and gift presentation at Enga Cultural Center, she paid a visit to the show site at Apus Oval and officially closed the 30th Enga Cultural Show ceremony. Edward Luke, National MTV News, Wabek. The closing of the 30th Enga Cultural Show hosted at the Ipus Oval in Enga Province saw Alamotis presented three new vehicles to the Enga Provincial Government. Chief Executive Officer of Alamotis, Mr. Masaru Mikami, did the official presentation. CEO Mikami donated three vehicles to the Enga Provincial Government. The vehicles are set to benefit the students of Innovative University of Enga, the affected people at Mulitaka, and the local community in various capacity. Mr. Mikami explained the relationship between the Enga Province and the Elamotos Company. Our relationship with Enga Province spans over two decades. Ten years is a provincial rugby big team that Enga Mikos from 2001. Enga was supported with a donation of Toyota Hi-Gates bus in 2015 for Enga School Nursing and supported the Enga Children's Farm in 2016. With the purchase of Toyota Land Cruiser 10 seater and earlier this year with the donation of our Toyota Land Cruiser 5 door. Today, thank you very much. Today is a special occasion for Enga Province and Elamotos. He said Elamotos with its partners. Japan and Australia have passed their sincere condolence message to the people affected in Mulitaka disaster by donating a Toyota Land Cruiser 10 seater and a Inno 300 truck to the disaster committee to help the victims in times of needs. 
Mr. Mikami thanked the Enga provincial government and the people of Enga on their continuous support towards Elamudus in purchasing vehicles. Meanwhile, the Enga provincial government presented a gift to Mr. Mikami and his delegates as a word of appreciation. Edward Luke, National MTV News, Wabek. National MTV News continues after the break with Chukai Sports. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. PNG International David Topeni has joined the Manunda Hawks after signing a one-year contract. Speaking to Chukai Sports today, David Topeni, also the manager for AFL PNG Southern Region Development Program, gave insights on his journey. With the contract that I signed with the um, Manunda Hawks in Cairns, uh, it's through um, AFL. And uh, with the support of the, um, our boss down in um, Brisbane, that links me up with the Africans and then uh, with the uh, club as well. So I'm um, not there just to play footy, but I'm working with the Africans as well, running PDs in schools with the Africans development team and uh, also getting an opportunity to play with the club. Yeah, so I signed a contract with the um, Manunda Hawks. It's just a, a year contract. Topeni further elaborated. Yes, we do have lots of um, boys uh, playing for different clubs in um, Kent's League. Uh, for the Manunda Hawks, we got um, five boys currently playing for the a team, and um, I'm the sixth one that joined them this year. So, yeah, we're looking forward for the big season coming up uh, next year. Unfortunately, um, Hawks didn't make it through um, this year finals. Uh, we got our first win. After two and a half years, uh, we got our first win last uh, last week, and um, there's a really good feedback from the club that um, hopefully we'll have uh, more PNG boys playing uh, in Kent's league and then uh, giving that opportunity to not only Papua New Guinea but um, Pacific uh, players playing AFL in their own region to um, move across to um, Far North Queensland to be part of the AFL uh, competition in Far North Queensland. Other PNG teammates include Killer Rawali, Mitchell White, Taylor Gorogo, Matthew White, and William Icy. Jonathan Sibona, Chukai Sports. The Papua New Guinea Premier Soccer League has seen an exciting season with teams vying for dominance in the nation's top football competition. At the top of the ladder, Hekari United continue to assert the dominance known for their consistent performances. Hekari United have secured crucial wins, maintaining their position with 16 points. Their closest rivals, Gulf Komara, are not far behind with 11 points. Komara's dynamic play and strong attacking options have made them a tough contender, keeping the pressure on Hekari United. United Islands FC is in the third place with 10 points and Lay City FC in fourth with 9 points. Both teams have shown brilliance but have struggled with consistency, making every match crucial. At the lower end of the table, Port Mosby strikers and Lay City dwellers are on 6 points, while Admiralty Islands and FC Morobe Wawen in 4 points. The competition will end in round 14 before going into the finals in October. Jonathan Sibona, Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. You're watching Chukai Sports. Moving to overseas sports. Dragons playmaker Carl Flanagan will front the NRL judiciary after he was accused of biting Bulldogs captain on Saturday night's match. 
His official charge is for dangerous contact, but he's accused of biting Bulldog skipper Stephen Crichton in Saturday's win over St George Illawarra. Crichton was left with a bloody nose and didn't make an official complaint about it till after full time. And in AFL, Sydney Swans forward Sam Wicks has received a four-game ban for a careless tackle on Collingwood's Ash Johnson. The tackle on Collingwood's Ash Johnson was graded as careless conduct, severe impact and high contact and it left Johnson with a concussion. The four-match suspension with an early plea would rule Weeks out till the third week of the AFL finals. Weeks has played 16 senior games this year but was dropped to the reserves after the Swans' round 21 loss to Port Adelaide. Dutch cyclist Charlotte Kuhl has won stage one of the Tour de France in a sprint finish. Kuhl moved clear with 100 metres to go and held off the chasers to claim the first leader's yellow jersey of the eight-stage race. Finland's Anina Atasalo finished second. The 124-kilometre flat run from Rotterdam to The Hague was the first time the race has started outside of France. And that ends Chukai Sports. The Money Plus weather report is next. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And now to the weather report for the next 24 hours. In the southern region, Port Moresby City, partly cloudy with chances of brief showers. Daru, partly cloudy with few rain showers. Kerama, mostly cloudy with few showers. Alotau, mostly cloudy with some rain and rain showers. And Popondeta, partly cloudy with few showers. In the Momase region, Lay City, partly cloudy with possible few showers. Medang mostly fine. Wewek partly cloudy with possible brief showers. And Vanimo partly cloudy with chances of brief showers. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau cloudy with few rain and rain showers. KVN cloudy with few rain, rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Kokopo and Rabaul partly cloudy with chances of brief showers. Kimbe partly cloudy with few showers. And Buka cloudy with few rain, rain showers and possible thunderstorms. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City, cloudy periods with few showers. Goroka, Bans and Kundiawa, partly cloudy with few rain showers. And Mendi, Tari and Wabek, cloudy with some rain showers. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Tuesday, the 13th of August, 2024. From all of us here, pleasant viewing and good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.